Okay, so if we use our limit laws, we can break these up. Now our limit laws are fairly intuitive. Um, we can do what we think we can do. So if I know the, if the limit of f of x plus g of x is 6, then I can break this up the limit of f of x plus the limit of g of x equals 6. And I can do the same thing for this guy. If I'm subtracting, if I have a limit of something subtracting, I can take the subtraction of limits. I can even pull that 2 out to the front, pull that constant out to the front. So I'm going to do 2 times the limit of f of x minus the limit of g of x is 1. And now we basically have two equations with two unknowns. Big, fat, clunky unknowns. But if you pic picture the limit of f of x as being like a big x and the limit of g of x as being like a big y, it's just a big unknown. And we need to solve for the limit of that. Well, it's all nice and set up. If we were to just add these two equations, these guys are going to go away. So if I have one of these limits of f of x plus two of these limits, I have three of these limits. The limit of g of x minus the limit of g of x goes away like we planned. Six plus one is seven. Last thing to solve for this limit is just to divide by three. So the limit of f of x is just going to be seven divided by three. That should be my answer. That's what they wanted, the limit of f of x, not the limit of g of x. If it, they wanted the limit of g of x, you just have to plug it back in. But they're letting us stop here, and our answer is b. Great.